Here at the CHESS 2014 conference in Austin, Texas, something of a home game for Dr. Zenet Safdar. She's from the Baylor College of Medicine. Thanks for being back with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to have a conference where you don't have to travel too far. Absolutely. So Austin you, is a great city. You had a couple posters here. Let's, let's talk about them. Tell us about the first one. The first poster is about uh, pro-collagen. It's P3NP as a marker of worse quality of life in patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension. It's for a poster discussion. It's exciting work. I, of course, I'm very passionate about it. So one of the hallmark of pulmonary arterial hypertension is vascular remodeling. And there's collagen deposition in these vessels. And there's a question about how can we assess this vascular remodeling non-invasively, mm -hmm. meaning without really cracking open the chest, without a biopsy, with imaging, and we don't, really don't have a good sense of how to do it. One way of doing it would be, or could be, to measure the collagen metabolites in the circulation. So the collagen is deposited and this collagen is produced as a big molecule. A little bit is chipped off, which is, can be, which is actually uh, goes into the circulation and we can measure it as a blood level of that circulation marker. So uh, looking at that, we looked at uh, pro-collagen 3 peptide. It's a marker of collagen 3 turnover, which is the most uh, predominant collagen in the lung. And we found out, interestingly, that it was elevated in patients with PAH. So we were very excited about that. But you see that all the, these markers are elevated, but they don't have anything to do with disease. So then we looked at correlation analyses and we looked at uh, P3NP as a marker of worse disease outcome, and it was. And there was an indication that it was a marker of worse outcome, meaning in patients uh, who had elevated uh, level of P3NP, um, they, were, they had a more tendency to die or have lung transplantation. The second part of that is to look at health-related quality of life. We, we have quality of life issues in patients with PAH, they do, don't do good. So we looked at four quality of life uh, questionnaires, instruments. Uh, at the time that they have these collagen markers, P3 and P drawn, and we found that these patients who had higher P3 and P level have worse quality of life. And, um, the odd ratio uh, of uh, having a worse outcome was increased if their PNP levels was high. So we propose in conclusion that P3NP may be a novel marker to look at uh, collagen vascular remodeling non-invasively in PH patients. And these may be an indicator of disease severity and worse outcome in these patients. So that was our first poster. Okay. It's kind of a mouthful, but that was the first cool. poster. The second poster is also interesting. It's looking at the switching of uh, bosentan to mesitentan uh, in patients with PAH. So at the Baylor PH Center, we switched 17 patients um, from uh, bosentan to mesitentan when mesitentan became FDA approved October of last year. 2013 and uh, we wanted to look at the efficacy and safety of this uh, switching between the two ERAs both of them are non-selective uh, and messy tentan is thought to be more uh, tissue specific and we found that these patients did very well they didn't have any deteriorations um, their LFTs didn't go up uh, their BNP remained uh, low and didn't go up. The function class remained unchanged. Interestingly, the edema actually came down, the incidence of edema in patients who were transitioned to Messi 1010. So in conclusion, we propose that switching from um, uh, Bosan 10 to Messi 1010 is okay, is efficacious and safe, and patients don't lose the efficacy of this treatment when they're switched over to this medication. So what might you do next with this research? So we are trying to uh, collect more data for these patients, long-term data. So we now have data up to three to six months. We want to collect data up to one year. We also want to get more patients, more centers involved and uh, get a cohort of patients from different centers to, uh, and then publish that data and take it to the next level. So it's available for all the practitioners out there in the community and our colleagues to help them transition patients from one ERA to another. Very good. Best of luck. We look forward to you sharing it here on PAH TV. My pleasure. Thank you very much.